Hey there, Digital World. Welcome back once again to another episode of Spliced In Later, our first episode of 2024. As per usual, we took a little break over the New Year's after I gave you the the wonderful list that was Spliced In Later's top 10 movies of 2023. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you either had fun with it or got really mad at it or were indifferent. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but here we are again. Take a little time to regroup, rest, plan for the year, and then get right back into it. Uh, I'm not as productive this week as I wanted to be. I uh, had planned to do two episodes this week. I really, really wanted to review the new Marvel TV show on Disney Plus, Echo, the Marvel first Marvel Spotlight, or whatever the hell that is. Um, I had it all worked out that it was going to drop on one day. I'd watch it all and then have it out for you on that day. Uh, things didn't come to pass. It dropped later than I expected. I haven't really got around to it yet. And also, I got suddenly very ill, um, which I'm only really sort of just shaking off now. So that is coming. That will be next week's episode. I will talk about Echo. It's just unfortunately, as with most Disney Plus shows, it will be a bit later than uh, probably the rest of the reviews. But who knows? You can listen to everybody else if you want, and then please come back and listen to me. Um it's always good, I suppose, to let it stew. Unlike this thing, which I'm reviewing almost immediately. Uh, I went to an advanced screening of this film. To it was, uh, Here in the local cinema near my house, any movie that has stars uh, female characters or has any sort of romance or, or pinkness to it of any kind, they call it a girl's night out. Which, as a guy, a solitary guy that goes to see these things by myself, I always feel a bit like... Maybe I'm not supposed to be there, but then why not? Why can't I go and see this film with the rest of the ladies? Um, I'm just as emotional as anyone else. So it doesn't really matter. I don't know why I'm telling you that, but it's just something that has happened three times to me in the past year. So I don't know. Limelight Cinemas, if you're listening, you don't have to call it a girl's night out. Guys will come. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's an advanced screening, so this movie is officially out, I believe, all around the world as of tomorrow. Uh, but just while it's fresh in my mind, and because I don't really have that much to talk about it, I think. I don't think I need that extra time to dwell on it. Let's get right into it. For our very first movie review of 2024, we are discussing Mean Girls. And not the Mean Girls that came out <laughs> 20 years ago in 2004. We're talking about a brand new Mean Girls to come out in 2024. You could say it's a remake, and it absolutely is a remake in the sense that it is it is the same movie again. It is Mean Girls again with the same characters, the same beat-for-beat beat moments. But not really in that it is also a musical, because I believe there is a stage show uh, for Mean Girls, Mean Girls the Musical. That's the big thing at the moment, is to make musicals out of movies. Uh, that weren't musicals when they came out. I know my family recently saw Back to the Future when they were overseas. Um, all the Disney things are doing it, but they were already musicals, I suppose. Um, who knows? Indiana Jones might be next. But there is supposedly a very well-received, solid musical for the Mean Girls, written and all of that by the same people. So this movie is more of an adaption of that musical. But the musical itself is an adaption of the original Mean Girls, so it is both a remake and a reimagining, I guess. But one thing you have to know right out the bat, this is a musical. As someone who did not know when they were sitting behind me, the moment the movie started and the very first lyrics were sung, and no joke, this may be the funniest thing that will ever happen to me the whole year. The person behind me went, oh, it's a musical. Not in a question, it was a realization. And they got up and they walked out. And they did not come back. It was not cheap to get these tickets for a girls' night out screening at Limelight Cinemas where you get your champagne and your choc choc or whatever. It's like nearly 30 Australian bucks. To just be like, nope, and leave is very funny. Um, if you hate musicals, I guess that's fair. Um, I don't know how you couldn't know it was a musical. It's not like Wonka where they kind of hit it. It's been very clear from the advertisements that this is a musical, that it's based on a musical. There's even a musical note in the A in the Mean Girls title. But if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, it is a musical and it is a lot of singing. Singing is probably more than half of this movie. So if you can't handle that, don't go, I guess. Um, the original Mean Girls, as we all know, is iconic. 
It is a a movie status gold standard aficionado, all the fancy words. It's in my fancy books saying it's a movie you should watch before you die. It's on my posters where you scratch off the movie that you've seen if it's iconic. Um, if you've never seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. One of the best films from Lindsay Lohan and Tina Fey and Rachel McAdams. The concept of it is very simple. It's a girl that's been homeschooled all of her life, goes to school. She has poor social skills. She doesn't understand the madness of schools, the cliques, the different ways to operate. Uh, she makes some actual solid friends, two specifically. Uh, one who's too gay to function and the other who has a vendetta against the popular girls in school, the Plastics, led by Regina George. The iconic Plastics. If you've heard anything in pop culture, get in, losers. We're going shopping. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It isn't going to happen. She doesn't even go here. This is the movie where all of that comes from. It's a hyper-exaggerated uh, film. Like uh, You can relate to it watching it, but it's also very exaggerated in the way people behave, how the teachers behave. Um, but if you were growing up in 2004, uh, it's extremely relatable. Very iconic, very quotable, very rewatchable. Uh, so I'm surprised, honestly, it's taken this long to make a remake. But it's nice that the spin is that it's a musical. Uh, and what do I think of it? I thought it was pretty good. I struggled with it in the beginning because it is beat for beat the same movie. Like they don't really try to do too much to change the course of events, the iconic lines, the situations. It is all the same. Uh, and if that was all it was, I would just say, why bother? If you like Mean Girls, you're better off just watching the original one because this is just a copy. But, and I say this most sincerely, uh, throwing the songs in puts a different spin to it in terms of just how you feel watching it. As you're getting through and you're like, I know this, I know this, I know this. It's waiting for the song to come in that sort of changes the way you perceive a scene. And it works. It really, really works. And the songs bop. They're really, really, really great. I don't believe the soundtrack is officially available on Spotify yet. But give it, you know, a day from where I'm recording it. I'm sure it'll be up there. And I'm really excited. I want to listen to it. They're not all hits. Some are a bit... Okay, I think you're just reaching for a song here. Like, there's a song where Gretchen Wieners uh, sings about, you know, she's sad and she doesn't understand why she's inferior to Regina George or whatever. That's kind of a struggle. There are a couple of awkward little songs here or there. But then you have something like the Apex Predator song, the song about being sexy on Halloween, uh, Janice's middle finger to the whole school. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, I really, really had a good experience watching it. Again, I went to a girls' night out screening and everybody there was very excited to watch it with the exception of the people behind me. But for the most part, it was a very good viewing experience. I don't know what it's going to be like for people seeing on a regular basis. Uh, I don't know how it's going to do box office-wise. Uh, but for a movie coming out in January, it's pretty solid. I will say, though, even though it is a remake and it is the same story, it also somehow weirdly exists in a world where the original Mean Girls still happened? Because you have Tina Fey and Tim Peacock and another surprise cameo in this film that are playing sort of the same characters. Tina Fey and Tim Peacock specifically are playing the same uh, science teacher, math teacher, I should say. I don't know. I haven't been to school in years. Uh, math teacher and principal. The fact Tim Peacock even has the same broken arm that he had in that original. But they act like they are the same characters that appeared in that original Mean Girls. And they're like, oh God, here we go again. And it's like those characters have progressed. And another surprise cameo in here is like, wow, I can't believe this is happening all over again. It happened to me once before. Which is very meta and strange. So that's kind of nice. If you're looking for something, uh, a reason for this movie to exist, you can be like, oh, we got to see how those characters evolved over time. Um... Aside from the musical being an absolute banger, uh, it is also an interesting way that has it adapted the Mean Girls setting for the current age. Obviously, 2004's Mean Girls is very, very iconic in the time that it exists in uh, and how it uses that current school culture to move the story along. And with this, because it's 20 years later, obviously, it's still the same in terms of cliques at school and bitchiness and 
nastiness and all of that stuff but obviously the way that it's done is different in terms of how technology has changed everything you know uh there's a throwaway line where the burn book comes out if you don't know what the burn book is the plastics keep that where they write down nasty things about people at school in the original in this it's like the burn book is here but they have to come up with a reason why they would use an actual piece of paper to write this stuff down where now it's all about social media and, and laptops and all of that so they're like oh that was the one week they took all our phones so we just wrote it all down which is funny because it didn't occur to me i was just like oh yeah people write stuff down but yeah i don't think i've written anything down <laughs> like that like i would back in that time now so it's clever in that regard and then you know the way rumors and things pass through schools and reactions and you get your tiktoks your instagrams uh someone like sending a message saying this person's not dead they're alive and then you just get a little heart on that message um it's very seamless it's very interesting that you can take this concept of mean girls and uh nastiness and clicks and all of that stuff you can take it 20 years later and put it in a completely different scenario and it seamlessly forms around the current culture and the way things behave which is pretty good i had a good time with that um the acting in it is pretty good uh, obviously uh you can't help but compare to the original cast and joy rice as katie is pretty good uh i don't think she's as iconic in the role as Lindsay lohan uh same with the actors who plays regina george i think her singing is absolutely phenomenal and she's fantastic uh she's no rachel mcadams uh some highlights i will say the girl playing the new amanda Seyfried, which is the the really ditzy dumb character she's insane she's so good she nails this like distant stare where there's like nothing behind the eyes and she'll just say something that's completely irrelevant to what's going on but her timing as she does it is just so great and you just can't help but just laugh at it and it's it's incredible how she can just riff off what other people are doing uh and has this just absent-minded expression which is insane it's so good and she has her own song about being sexy at halloween uh which is quite also a banger i will say this movie feels a lot more hyperly sexualized than the first one but i don't know maybe that's just because i am 20 years older and i'm watching the same movie but i am older but the age graphic in me and girls hasn't changed so i'm very aware i'm like okay i don't like how much you're going look at these high school girls and how they're not wearing anything and they're slutty and all of that and i'm like mm, was it like that in the original me girls again i don't know times have changed i don't know how the kids are behaving but i did feel like this was very look how scantily clad they're wearing look how the guys have their dicks out i don't know <laughs> that's just something that i think is uncomfortable and awkward for me um i do remember hearing someone behind me in the movie theater being like jesus <laughs> so maybe not um again though that's adapting to today's climate um it is what it is uh tina fey's great tim p cox great uh, John Hamm has a sneaky little cameo in here, which is all right. Uh, for the most part, everybody's really good. Uh, I really, really liked the guy playing Damien. I can't remember his name, but he's the uh, the gay best friend. He's very funny. He's got a great singing voice. Uh, he had some re really good ways of spinning lines. So even when he's saying things like, she doesn't even go here, which they've said before, he has his own little tweak to it, which makes you laugh. He was probably my favorite character in the whole movie. And I also thought, uh, I can't pronounce her name, but the voice of Moana playing uh, Janice, who is the true friend to Katie, uh, is really great. She's definitely the best singer in the whole bunch. Uh, she got some really good stuff in there, which is great. Honestly, there's not that much to say about it without me just sort of repeating what the, makes the original Mean Girl so good, which I guess is a detriment to it. But I do think the musical aspect of it sort of gives the movie its own identity and its own life yes you are aware in very specific points ah i have seen this movie before and yes i could just be watching the original mean girls but it's self-aware enough that it knows that it's doing that so it tries to spin things to add some some tweaks here and there but it builds its foundations up on 
the musical aspect of it. And as long as your songs are solid, a musical is going to work for me. And the songs were solid. I had a really good time with it. Uh, it's a good start to the year. I give it a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, I had a fun time with it. I'd like to go and see the stage show. I don't know if I would enjoy it as much now having seen the film and sort of knowing how it goes, but a stage performance is always a lot different than a movie. There's something special about going to see a musical on stage because it all has to happen seamlessly in front of you. There's no cuts. There's no movie magic or anything. It's just holding your interest, watching these people sing incredibly in front of you without any additional help or support or anything like that. So if I ever get the chance, I'll probably go check it out. But this is great. It's a lot of fun. If you don't like musicals, don't bother. <laughs> if you think the original Mean Girls is a classic and untouchable and you don't want to see it again, uh, probably don't bother. But if you really like the original Mean Girls, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this. Honestly, the cinema experience that I had, everybody around me, except for that person that pissed off right in the beginning, were having a lot of fun. They were laughing. It's one of those few movies where at the end someone started clapping, which is annoying, but enough people joined in when I think that uh, sort of sums up the opinion of the whole cinema. It's not like it's that lone person who's clapping in Napoleon and everyone else is like, what are you doing? Stop that. Good time. If you're looking for something fun to see over the weekend, if you're looking for a good way to kick off year, if you're looking for something to put you in a good mood, I think this is it. Go check it out. Mean Girls 2024, the musical. Solid. There you are. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed. Rather short review, but Honestly, there's not that much to say other than it was pretty dang good. As I said, I'll be back next week to review Echo from the MCU. Um, I'm hearing good things about it early on uh, in terms of the mature content, the Netflix style embracing, the fact that it's a self-contained story that doesn't have to build to some overarching plot. But who knows? I also know it was cut from six episodes to five. I know it was delayed. I know this big, massive overhaul from MCU regarding showrunners and how they make shows. Who's to say? Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. But once I see it, I'll review it for you next week and add it to the ever-growing MCU list. The thing that we talk about here most on this damn show. And then who knows? i got some good movies lined up this year I want to see. I'm not going to do a anticipated movies because... The way things change with strikes and pandemics, half the time you make a list saying these are the movies I want to see this year, uh, and then they don't come out. But I believe what's coming out in February, that which is should be locked in, is Argyle from Matthew Vaughan, uh, Madam Web, I guess, uh, and then hotly anticipated Dune Part 2. So hopefully those will be the reviews I bring to you in February. Mixed up with that, there'll be probably some more top 10s. Uh, some looking back at classic films, some TV reviews. There's some good stuff coming. I hope this year uh, will be kind to all of us, uh, and I hope Splice and Later kicks on uh, as we go into 2021 20, Oh my god, this will be my fifth year. That's wild. All right, five years of Splice and Later. I hope you're liking it. <laughs> I really do. Anyway, until next week, I love and appreciate you as always. Thank you for listening to me. As always, it means the world to me. And I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you with my eyes, but you will hear me with your ears. You've been spliced in later. Adios, muchachos. I'll catch you next time. Mm-hmm.